Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at patent claims that are created by ChatGPT, our favorite internet chatbot. So in order to do this, I need to have an invention, right? I have to have something for it to write claims on, so let's come up with an invention. And here's where I get to put on my science fiction hat and just make something up. So no, this isn't a real invention, but we're going to just make something up for the purposes of seeing how ChatGPT does. So I have an invention. You know your standard cement mixer. Well, I have an idea to let the cement stay fluid and soft for longer periods, I will put a heating element in the rotating drum. This way, the cement will stay soft longer so I can drive out to more remote sites. Uh, so I think it'll be a good improvement. And I'll use a nuclear reactor to uh, heat the heating element so it won't consume any fossil fuels. Um, I've spec'd it out and I believe that uh, the nuclear reactor could be a molten salt reactor or maybe a fast neutron reactor. So let's write a request to ChatGPT. Please write some claims for this invention. A cement mixing truck with a heating coil internal to the rotating drum. The heating coil is heated by an onboard nuclear reactor. The nuclear reactor can be a molten salt reactor or a fast neutron reactor. So let's punch that into ChatGPT. And here it comes up with, hmm, not exactly what I expected, more like brochure bullet points, you know, about all the different things it can do. This is more like an advertising campaign. So uh, we're going to need to augment our request. So I'm going to add the word patent claim, right? Because before I said claims, and I think ChatGPT thought, well, maybe you want uh, claims for an ad brochure or an advertising campaign. But this is what we mean, patent claims. So let's put this in the ChatGPT. Oh, that's better. We got some claims. It actually gave 10 claims. I'm just showing the first five here. And uh, let's take a look at what it did. We'll t take a look at them in detail. Here they are <coughs> in uh, text form. So we are going to uh, go through them. So it says here, sure, here are some example patent claims for your invention. So claim one, cement mixing truck comprising, rotating drum configured to mix cement, cementious materials, internal heating coil positioned within the drum, onboard nuclear reactor configured to heat said heating coil. So far, this is not bad. I mean, it's it's kind of high level what we said. I like the fact that um, for every element we claim, it uses it in the next line. So in the first line, we have the rotating drum. And then the second line, we have the heating coil, something, something, rotating drum. And then the third line, we have onboard nuclear reactor, something, something, heating coil. So that's all good. Then in the... Uh, Next, the, the bottom line here, uh, wherein said nuclear reactor is selected from the group consisting of a molten salt reactor and a fast neutron reactor. This is actually called a Marcus uh, claiming style. It is, uh, it is fairly commonly used for dependent claims. Normally, uh, you would not put that in an independent claim. It's really a fancy way of saying the word or without putting the word or in the claims because there are certain reasons why people don't want to usually include the word or uh, in a claim um, because it can complicate certain things. Uh, so uh, I don't think I would have put this in the first claim because I would think that um, basically building a street legal portable nuclear reactor is hard enough and there's probably novelty there to explore and then as to which kind of nuclear reactor it is that uh, stuff which is in the red box here could be put into a dependent claim so for example I could have claim 2 wherein the onboard nuclear reactor is a molten salt reactor and claim 3 uh, the cement mixing truck of claim one where in uh, the nuclear uh, reactor is a fast neutron reactor and so on. So don't quite agree with this, but it's not terrible. Uh, it is on the on the right wavelength, I suppose. Um, well, let's take a look at uh, claim two. Uh, this is interesting. Claim two. 
um, it talks a little bit about uh, where the heating coil is. Now, we didn't tell ChatGPT where it was. We just said it's in the drum. But here, ChatGPT is making an assumption that it's along the inner surface of the rotating drum. That sounds plausible, I guess. Uh, so why not? That's not necessarily a terrible uh, claim. They have this purpose clause here. Um, I tend not to include these in claims. I don't think they help, at least not initially. I do like to include these sort of purpose statements in the written description. So I would probably, uh, if I was writing this claim, I would probably stop after the rotating drum uh, part of it and not include this facilitating uniform heat distribution during the cement mixing process. Uh, it doesn't really add to the patentability, I don't think. So I don't think it improves the chance that this claim will get allowed. It doesn't really do anything. It's basically saying why we're doing it, right? We're doing the heating coil on the inner surface to get uniform heat distribution. Well, that's fine. We can put why we're doing it in the written description, but it doesn't really help us in the claim because the novelty in these types of claims is for what it is right what what is the structure not the advantages of why we're doing it so i would not include this portion here in red this claim three um the heating coil comprises a heat conductive material capable of withstanding high temperatures this looks good but it's really just stating the obvious and likely a worthless claim right because you know heating coils that's what they do they transfer heat of course they're going to have a heat conductive material it's not really uh, saying anything novel and it's not likely to be a very valuable claim let's go on to claim four again with claim four, the cement mixing truck of claim one, further comprising a temperature control system configured to adjust the heating output, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so again, ChatGPT came up with something. We never told it about a temperature control system, but that seems like something you may need when you have heat. You may need a way to control the heat, so why not? And again, it has a purpose clause in it, enabling precise temperature regulation. Uh, that type of clause rarely is helpful in a claim. Uh, so I would never put that in, at least the initial set. Sometimes during the, uh, the course of trying to get a patent application allowed, which is called prosecution, during that prosecution phase, sometimes an examiner will you know, ask for something like that to be included. And in that case, uh, I would include it. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, but the point being is these types of purpose clauses I would not include in an initial set of claims most of the time. And finally, uh, claim five, wherein the nuclear reactor is a molten salt reactor using a molten salt mixture. Uh, again, this maybe looks very claimy, but it's really just stating the obvious and likely a worthless claim because molten salt reactors use a molten salt mixture. That's really nothing new. It kind of looks very legalese and patenty, but not really very helpful. And finally, I'd like to point out the ChatGPT disclaimer. Uh, it says, remember that patent claims should be carefully drafted to accurately describe the novel and non-obvious aspects of your invention while providing the broadest protection possible. Consulting with a patent attorney or professional is highly recommended to ensure that your claims are well-crafted and aligned with patent law requirements. And I totally agree on that. Basically, uh, what it's saying is that these uh, claims are for edutainment purposes only. A little bit of learning, a little bit of uh, entertainment, but uh, not to really be cut and pasted into a patent application. We're not there yet. So in summary, <coughs> I think uh, ChatGBT did a pretty good job in creating claims that seemed very patenty. They looked like patent claims, and to a layperson, they looked like uh, legit legalese things. Some claims uh, made assumptions about how the components went together, right? So it took what we gave it, which wasn't much, just a couple sentences, and it made some assumptions about, uh, for example, where the heating coil was in, in relation to the uh, drum and so forth. Some claims provided additional features, like recall claim four had the temperature control unit. We never talked about having one, but ChatGPT and its wealth of knowledge said, well, when you have a heating system, you, you might need temperature control. 
And some claims seemed patenty, which means that uh, they look like real patent claims, but didn't really say much. Like claims three and claims five, they were pretty much stating the obvious, not really doing anything for us. Uh, my take is that ChatGPT can be good as a brainstorming tool. Uh, the results it gave for our example, I don't think, are appropriate for a real patent application. But it's not a, a terrible thing to see what ChatGPT comes up with. And uh, maybe some of it is usable uh, with some editing. And now I'd like to give an off script editorial on artificial intelligence. Uh, full disclaimer, I have been wrong about a lot of technological trends, so I could be completely wrong here, but uh, I'm going to tell you what I think if you're curious. Uh, a couple questions uh, I've been getting over uh, recent year, uh, years is, is AI going to take over the world and rise up against humans? Uh, no, I don't think so. I view AI as an advanced pattern recognition and generation tool. And while it can create some stunning results at this moment, it is not sentient, and I don't see it as that kind of threat at this time. Is AI dangerous since it can produce deep fakes? Um, it is true that AI can create some amazingly real-looking fake images and fake audio tracks. Uh, I think it will take time for the public to adjust. Uh, fake photos have been around for decades, and Photoshop, when it came out, was a game changer that made convincing images at the time. Today, <coughs> when we see some outlandish photo, we often assume that it is Photoshopped. And over the time, the public will develop a similar skepticism about the possibility that an outlandish photo or sound clip is AI generated. So I think over time, uh, the public will adjust to the new capabilities that AI has. Uh, is AI going to make some jobs obsolete? Yes, you better believe it. It will. But like every technology, I believe AI will also create some new jobs as well. Should AI be regulated? <coughs> well, perhaps in some ways. In other ways, it may be nearly impossible to do so. So I would assume that any regulation that does happen will be limited and only really suited for cases where it can be actually enforced. Is AI a good thing overall? Yes, I believe it is. Uh, AI is a tool like a hammer is a tool. And just like you can do good things with a hammer, like fix a roof, you can also do bad things with a hammer, like knock somebody out. As with any tool, AI can be used for both good and bad, but I believe there is much more good to come out of AI than bad. But it will take society some time to adjust to the new applications and capabilities of AI that are continuing to come out. So I hope you found this uh, video helpful and interesting. If so, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.